بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ان دا پاس فیو سیشنز وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی گورمنٹ ایز اے میجر اسٹیک ہولڈر ان کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی بین لوکنگ ایٹ اٹس ویریس فنکشنس اٹس رول اینڈ دین ہاؤ اٹ ٹینس ٹو ریگولیٹ دا ہول کارپوریٹ سیکٹر ناؤ وین وی لوکنگ ایٹ ڈفرینٹ گورمنٹ ریگولیشنز دین ان آر لاسٹ سیشن وی بیسکلی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرینس بٹوین ڈسکریشنری اینڈ نان ڈسکریشنری ریگولیشنز اینڈ آلسو مینڈیٹری Uh, versus uh, voluntary regulations. Today we are going to move a little bit ahead and we are going to talk about principle versus rule-based uh, government regulations. And I would just like to mention that the difference between all the different formats or forms uh, of regulations uh, is, is very subtle. Uh, and many times we see that there are gray areas and sometimes we see uh, that they are overlapping, but uh, it's, it's very important that they should be distinguished. And it can also be a matter of interpretation. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about uh, rule versus principle-based regulations, then discretionary regulations are those are the choice of the regulations administrative agency. Uh, discretionary regulations are formulated by the regulatory agency based upon its principles, policies, and approach. And an example, a very good example, is basically how the district governments uh, have their own price control uh, committees and price control regulations. And uh, based upon that, we see that every district has its own pricing. So if we start off from Karachi and go uh, up to Skardu, then we see that uh, there are uh, different prices for different commodities and they are uh, basically uh, discretionary. And secondly, they are based upon certain principles, policies and approach that how is it that that pricing is basically calculated. So that is uh, a very good example of uh, what we see uh, can be called principle based uh, basically Uh, regulations. Now, rules also reduce the discretion of the individual management to follow it. So, uh, when we are looking at rules, then we see that there is very less discretion as compared to when we are talking about principle-based. Uh, rules are more complex and hence easy to uh, overcome. So, again, what we see is that these rules uh, are very explicit, are uh, very controlled, and most importantly, uh, they uh, are followed uh, ditto. So, for example, Uh, if there is a rule uh, that uh, that the offices will start at 8 a.m., then offices will start at 8 a.m. And if there is a rule uh, that uh, everyone uh, has to be uh, dressed according to a, a particular format, then uh, that is how it has to be done. Uh, similarly, there could be rules uh, which are systemic. Uh, there could be rules which are process-oriented. And therefore, we'll see that there's very less deviation uh, between uh, these different rules, uh, which basically are, uh, again, uh, mandatory uh, uh, as per government uh, regulations. Now, uh, if you look at the rule-based system, it seldom cultivates a culture and value system of adherence to the regulation because those rules basically are stringent. And therefore, that culture is not developed within the organization or within the stakeholders. Simply stating, Uh, the rule-based system basically specifies and satisfies uh, the tick, uh, the box ticking uh, purpose that, okay, uh, first thing has been done, second thing has been checked, third thing has been checked, and therefore it's basically uh, a checking system. And uh, it is uh, very uh, straight-jacketed and uh, very silo-based. The success of rule-based system depends on the vigilance of the implementation. So it does require a lot of vigilance. And based upon that vigilance, then different what we call uh, SOP, standard operating procedures, are followed ditto uh, by the stakeholders or by the individuals uh, related to that particular agency or that particular institution. Principal systems are more philosophical in nature and inculcate the culture and value system in the organization. So uh, basically, it is more value-based. So let's say okay, if uh, it is, uh, there is a value that it is customer-centric, then It does not have to be rule-based, but it would be more towards uh, attitude, more towards a behavioral context, so that everyone is practicing it, not because there is a rule, but because that is the culture or that is the philosophy of that particular organization. The system is adhered to, even if the enforcement system is not very much vigilant, because there is more self-discipline in this particular uh, context. Uh, to achieve the spirit behind the rule, having a principle-based system is important. The principle-based system is more scientific in nature 
and ensures long-term sustainable development. So uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is that in the principle-based system, that is more sustainable, it is more long-term. Why? Uh, because it is inculcated in the philosophy of the organization. It is values-based. Uh, it is behavioral. It is attitude-based. And uh, again, while the rules uh, are more paper-based and they are more straight-jacketed, more stringent, and therefore, uh, based upon changing circumstances, rules uh, would be changing while principles uh, change very late. The Hampel Committee on Corporate Governance emphasizes that the governance system must be principle-based rather than rule-based to ensure the growth and development of a good corporate citizenship. So again, the Hampel Committee uh, emphasized the importance uh, of principle-based uh, because in the rule-based, uh, the longevity of uh, that particular uh, system uh, would be very short-lived, while in the principle-based, it is far uh, uh, longer. The King Committee, while developing the South African corporate governance system, basically noted that the code must be non-legislative and should be based on certain principles, and therefore, then its adaptability and enforceability would be more convenient. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, on the other hand, has the opinion that corporate governance system must be rules-based, transparent, and enforceable. So, the OECD, because it's basically uh, an amalgamation of 30 countries, would like to see a system which could be applied on all the countries. And therefore, we see that that rule-based system is easier to apply on a wider scale. While the principle-based system, even though it has more sustainability, but it is more localized, more customized, and uh, more uh, flexible in its context, and therefore, its applicability on a global level becomes very difficult. And it's more uh, towards a local level, either uh, institutionally or culturally. So what we see is that the, uh, the principle-based has its own significance. The rules-based has its own applicability. Sometimes there can be an admixture of both, that it can be rule and principle-based. So depending upon the situation, depending upon the country, and depending upon the background, we can have rule-based, principle-based, or a hybrid model of rule and principle-based uh, regulations. Thank you so much.